Greetings, YouTube. The Doctor is in. Dr. Urias Papers here, coming at you with another commentary on Marvel Contest of Champions. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a question or comment. All right. We are going to talk about the new, and this is the old, but we're going to talk about the new update to the Revive Farming uh, saga that is going on with Marvel Contest of Champions. So I put this up for context. This is what was put out on March 21st, 10 days ago. Um, you know, it talks about the apothecary. Um, says, we are we have been aware of revive farming over the last year, blah, blah, blah. So with the release of our April build, we will be changing the availability of revives and potions in early game content while simultaneously introducing a new way to earn consumables. Um, now they are calling us, so we have been aware of Revive Farming in Revives Acts 1 through 3. So I think they're only targeting 1 through 3, particularly 3 to 6. So the biggest change you'll see is to revive drops across 1 through 3. There are a number of factors that led to the current near certain drop rate of revives in 3 to 6. So they're mainly talking about 326. We all know about it. They gave us the, apothe the apothecary, which says that we're going to be able to get a level one revive, one of those per day with a chance of getting another one per day. Okay, so here's the update. This, Of course, this looks like it came out from the MCOC team, but, you know, it looks like the team and it's very formal. And then when they want a softer message to come out, we get one from Kabam Jax. So, um, over the last week's announced changes of Revive Farming and Game, we have monitored the community conversation through numerous channels, including these forums, our content creator program, and various other social medias, which means they paid attention to us YouTubers about what we had to say about how stupid this change was. Um, and uh, about, essentially, just... The complete bunk in this post, this earlier post right here, um, about their reasonings. And and particularly about the apothecary and how they were making it out to sound like it's so great. And how we're not going to have to rely on RNG anymore. So that none of that was real. Um, that was just posturing. So they're listening mainly to the social media folks, the YouTubers. We are aware of the community's frustration and have been in constant discussion on how we want to proceed. Max has actually got a very good video about this where he talks about how we get this kind of knee-jerk reaction from Kabam, and then they pull it back. And this is the pullback. So, adjustments to the revive economy. The discourse over the last week and half has not fallen on deaf ears. We understand this change will be jarring. But this has highlighted other areas in which the Revive ecosystem should change. One of the most obvious is the amount of restrictions imposed by the inventory cap. So under this system, now it's last week, summoners would be able to earn on average five level one revives per week from the apothecary and seven level one revives per week from the 22-hour solo event. We always were able to do this. I don't know why they're even talking about that. We're always able to do seven of these per week from the 22 hour events. There are other sources of revives in game, but these are the guaranteed regular sources within a 14 experience. Okay, so they're talking about, you know, what's, so what is changing? Keep the apothecary open for seven days a week instead of the initial five, adding two more. So we're gonna be able to get seven out of the apothecary. Increase the inventory cap of all single PVE revives from 15 to 20 and if you're a pay-to-play player and you've got a sigil, then uh, we're going to be able to keep 25. Change the level 1 revive in the Thronebreaker and Paragon 22-hour event to a level 2. That's a big, giant, massive change because that's a 40% revive. So we'll be able to get 7 of the 40, 40% per week and 7 of the level ones per week out of the apothecary the addition of level two re two revives to guaranteed regular rewards means summoners can now stack two different levels of earned revives for the runs and right now we can't get these these level twos 
The only time you get those is from like special calendar events and things. So this is a good, I, I'm okay with this change. Uh, so you can stack two different kinds, taking advantage of the inventory for each. With seven revives available from the Apothecary and an inventory capacity of 20, summoners will be able to stack 34 level one revives. 20 inventory, 14 overflow, and they're saying 14 overflow because they um, expire in two weeks. So the most you can ever keep in there is 14 uh, because the 15th will expire. You get 34 in a single run. You will additionally be able to earn seven level two revives per week from the 22, um, and you'll be able to stack another 34 level twos in total. This brings a limit from 39 revives to 68, 78 with a sigil. 78 is a lot. That's a lot, but Brian Grant has a good video about this too, where it says that um, that you can get way more, and he's right. You can. We're going to look at some of those ways. Three changes mentioned above will exist on varying timelines. When the apothecary launches in April, it will be on a five-day cycle. We are aiming to expand to a seven-day to seven days in our May build. Okay, so we're getting wrong. We're getting we're getting bent over in April. They're, they're going to give it to us in April, and then May they'll make it better. Uh, we are planning increasing the inventory cap and add the level 2 revives to the 20-hour event as soon as possible. So we have no idea when that is. We're getting the shaft up here in April, and then it's going to get fixed in May, and this is as soon as possible. We are targeting late next week. That would be fantastic. So we can kind of... So even though we're getting a little gypped out of things in April, we're getting, uh, we're getting something in return with these level twos. Um, adjustments to the potion ecosystem. This lengthening dialogue with summoners has also put a spotlight on current potion inefficiencies. The game team has discussed a revamp to potions and are committed to overhauling the system. And what they're talking about is probably this wonderful thing right here, right here. This is these two things, this level one health potion and this level two health potion are jokes. They're jokes. That's like 375 and 600 health on something that has like 38,000 health. So um, it's best to consider this as tangentially related to the changes in the situation as the timeline, as always, timeline shift. Transparent design philosophy we want to revisit and further explain the driving force behind these choices and what we what we mean when we say things like this frenzied revive farming trivialize it doesn't. We feel the best way to further explain is to provide additional design transparency in a way we often avoid due to the challenging nature of managing in-game economy. So blah, 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 blah. Um, they're just, and this is all just bunk. But um, how is grinding for units any different than grinding for revives it all comes down to design intent so they're just trying to make excuses for giving us this loophole for so long and then saying oh it was our mistake but we need to take it back um the ease of access this revive farm provided has resulted in many summoners being able to punch above their weight class with enough revive, summoners can brute force any content. What they really mean is you're punching above your weight class without spending money. And we can't have that. And so with enough revives, summoners can brute force any content without spending money. You can add without spending money to the end of each one of these sentences. This means over time the community's mentality towards endgame content shifted from the intended aspirational to the feeling that it should be inevitable without spending money. It is an unfortunate side effect that directly contributes to the removal of the farm to allow the game team to reliably create and balance new end game and Everest type content by making people spend money. Um, so this was a result of a change that took place in November 2021 prior to this preparing for content involved grinding mostly for units, not revives. Summoners would, so they're talking to free-to-play players. Now, so now that we've talked about that, I want to go in and just kind of review some places we think we're going to be able to get revives after this change. So the 22-hour event is right here. So right now we're on event quest, and I've already gotten some stuff. 
So we're going to, once you get the level three, which is pretty easy to do, by the way, it's not hard to get this level three uh, progression on this 22 hour event that this level one revive is now going to be replaced with a level two revive for Thronebreaker and Paragon players. And you'll be able to get seven of these uh, every week. You can, you can do this 22 hour event every single day. In addition, the Apothecary is going to be probably in these daily quests here somewhere. Um, and we'll be able to get a level one revive every day for seven days. Excuse me, seven days. Now, um, where are other places that we can get this? Well, there usually is something on the calendar. Our calendar is complete. But there's usually a 40%. See if I can see it here. There, there's a team revive right there. And the week before that, there's there's one 40%. So we're going to be able to get one of these per month. And there's a level one revive there. So there's two. Yep, there's, there's two revives per month on there as well. Uh, in addition, um, that now they're saying they're going to change contents for Acts 1 through 3. So... 326 is the one that they're really hammering on. But, but, there is 5, Act 5, Chapter 3, Act 6. We're going to go in here. If maybe we're going to go in here. And this one also has quite a few revives in it. They're not always there. There's one there. There's one right there. And there's one there. So now this Act 5, Chapter 3, uh, Quest 6, you cannot auto-fight this. This is not auto-fightable. Um, so because of the PI of these guys, you do have to fight this. But this is not hard content for uh, almost all Paragon players and probably most Thronebreaker players. And there's full recharges in here. So I'm hoping this is not going to change. Um, I'm really hoping this is not going to change. So, so with that, we probably should be able to farm. I, you know, I like to be able to get three or four revives per day. And um, I think that's more than adequate. Um, and if we're going to be able to hold so many, uh, we'll be able to hold way more than um, than 68. So if I go to my... So right now I'm sitting at 29. That's going to go to 25. And I'm sitting at 740%. That's going to go up. So we should be able to hold a whole bunch. And then um, just remember that you can hold rewards. So you can hold rewards here for seven days. So when you get those 22-hour event rewards, that they the, these will sit in here for seven days. So it's not 14 days. It's actually 21 days that you can hold things uh, for a lot of things. So that's kind of what I think about all of this. Um, just to kind of review of, of what's going on. I hope everybody enjoyed the video, and I will catch everybody later.